Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blow Daz. I'm Sophie. Office Blow Caden. I'm Gaynor. Okay, does everybody know what prohibition is, right? No alcohol. It was the it was the banning of alcohol in the USA. Uh, yeah. Back in the, uh, I guess in like the 1920s, was it? I think it was 20s, 20s. yeah, maybe early yeah. 30s. Yeah, so imagine you doing that over here today. No. It would be a happen? riot. It yeah. actually yeah. wouldn't happen. No. It would save well, us a fortune, though. It would. <laughs> yeah, but it would probably lose England and the government loads of money. Yeah. It would do, yeah. But that's the, uh, I think this is the whole point behind it. I think what you get is when people who don't drink start making the rules about drinking, that's when it all goes pear-shaped, and that's what's happening in England at the moment. And the, the cost of tax and the, um, VAT and duty and all kind of different taxes they put on the levy onto alcohol over here, that's what makes it so expensive. Yeah. So the cost of making a bottle of wine costs, costs something like 28p, yeah. something, yeah. something ridiculous. And then once you add all the taxes and duties onto it, yeah. it goes really, that's what costs cost you the money. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit crazy. There's yeah. actually more and more people I found that are going alcohol free now. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Jumping well, on yeah. the bandwagon, are they? I don't know. I don't Jumping off that. the bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's that people have tried it and then thought, actually, I can still have fun without it, and and it's kind of. Yeah, I don't understand how people can have fun. I know it sounds tough, but like, like, when you're on a night I, out. I agree, to be honest. Like, I couldn't go on a night out and not drink, I'd be bored. Yeah, same. But if you were going on a night out with everybody else who wasn't drinking? I wouldn't they, everyone, would, everyone would be bored, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone would be like, this is shit, should we go? I've been out plenty of times and not drank and had a good time. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love anyway, it. this is Prohibition and White failed uh, in the USA. Yeah. Don't know this channel, it's new to us, so uh, let's see how it goes. We all know the story. In the 1920s, those half-witted crazies from the rural parts decided that alcohol was the product of Satan's temptation to man. Mobsters popped up, people died, and everyone decided that it was a bad idea. Right? Well, not entirely. Prohibition is one of those moments in American history that is often pointed to as one of the great missteps in the nation's timeline, amongst other things but it wasn't as clear-cut as it initially seems. So with that, we'll be taking a look at American prohibition of alcohol. Alcohol itself has been a part of culture for a very, very long time. While I don't intend to delve into the history of alcohol today, I do feel it's important to know why people decided that it was worth banning in the first place. First, let's start off in 1791 in the relatively new United States. The Revolutionary War had left a noticeable debt in the nation's financials. To ease this strain, a tax was proposed on the sale of alcohol produced within the nation. The idea to tax alcohol wasn't at random. It was considered luxury to an extent, and therefore the assumption was that the response would be relatively calm. At the same time, those who believed alcohol caused great pain in society through abuse, addiction, and drunkenness favored the tax to discourage its use. The response to this wasn't quite as calm as originally planned, and thus rebellion, death, and military response formed the core of the Whiskey Rebellion. Again, a story for another day. Alcohol was divisive to many. To some, it was a necessary part of life, an extension of the freedom Americans fought to gain. To others, it corrupted good men into shells of their former selves. Throughout the years, resistance to alcohol consumption grew. The resistance formed the core of temperance movements that popped up all over the world during the 18th through 20th centuries. As the 1800s went on, resistance to alcohol transformed from stopping alcoholism to stopping consumption of alcohol in general. Religion was quite core to the movement, with the drink being seen as immoral, as well as various women's rights. That's what I was just going to say. I wonder what point religion comes into it. Because when you go around the world now, there's certain countries I've been to where you can't get any alcohol whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. Saudi Arabia, Saudi. Kuwait, Libya. Uh, so like countries. UAE, do, can you drink? Can you yeah. Drink? Oh, yeah. yeah, you can actually, sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah but when you go in the UAE, in places like the UAE, um, Oman. Um, you couldn't just drink out in public there, could you? You can't, you can't drink in public over here. It's banned in public. You can't to drink alcohol in public over here is an offence. No, you, you can't walk down the street with a, yeah. a can yeah. of beer. But if there's, like an, if, if there's an, if there's an organised event, then yeah, you can have alcohol in the street. Like, and also like, in, like, in Centre Manchester, street. they have like, you know, squares yeah, where yeah, there's a squares where you can have to, Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. That's an organised event related to a pub. And it's the same as the UAE. So you, we, you wouldn't be able to go, you, they are now, but when we first moved there, you wasn't, you couldn't walk down the street and walk into a pub. There was none. Yeah. They were all associated with a hotel or with a golf club or with some kind of sports club. 
and they had the bars inside the hotels and the sports clubs. But what I'm trying to say, because it's like against their religion over there type thing, you got you won't even see it in shops. There'll be a designated yeah. store just for. It was designating alcohol stores. It wasn't. They, you wouldn't get them in like the local uh, supermarket. Yeah. You had to go to an alcohol store to get it. Yeah. Is and that why even now? And when we first went, you had a license. Yeah. And depending on what you earn, depending on how much you could spend on alcohol every month. Really. Yeah. yeah. So they used to stamp your license um, for the amount you bought, and then one of the one of them said, right, every fa- every five stamps you got, you got a free shop. So I think so I remember going in and I had like uh, about six hundred quid of free shop, free alcohol to buy. Didn't I? Yeah. But I was like, I was buying stuff I didn't even need because it was so much money. I had. I was just buying like I bought like pims and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's uh, but yeah, when you go to these countries, religion certainly plays a big part in it. But what what happens now is if you want to be a tourist resort and you want to attract people from around the world. You've kind of got to introduce alcohol into yeah. your tourism because people from the UK, for sure, don't really necessarily go to certain countries where there's no alcohol. Yeah, they kind of so, don't. It's part of our so culture. Sa- yeah, so Saudi Arabia have got beautiful, you know, got beautiful beaches and beautiful areas to sort of like build a, a resort. But if you don't introduce alcohol, people won't go from no. this country. No. And I know Germany, same with Germany, same with France, same with Spain, same with Italy. Yeah. Places like that, probably the same in you know, USA, Canada. Yeah, you know, people like South to eat, even countries. if it's just a glass of wine with dinner, people like yeah. to have a glass Correct. of wine. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're on but holiday, even, that's what you go to, go on holiday for. But even when we, were in, we when we went to Kuwait, we weren't allowed to sing happy birthday to someone in the restaurant who was with us. Because you weren't allowed to sing in public. Mm. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Just, I think it's changed a little bit now. Yeah, I'd say better. Saudi's definitely <clears> changed. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it was up until recently that women can actually drive, wasn't it? The last two, the last three years, yeah. I think. Yeah. Remember when I went to Saudi, women weren't allowed to drive. Yeah. Yeah, it was a. Uh, wow. Yeah. And now there's so many accidents over there. <laughs> <laughs> Parking's failed. <laughs> movements as drunk men could return home from bars to commit violence against family members. At the same time, poor water in the nation made alcohol quite the go to drink for not catching various diseases. Prohibitionists, also known as dries, attempted to fix this by creating fountains of which people could get clean water for free. While these private ventures would not pop up everywhere due to cost, it was a movement in its own right, and some still stand today. Maine law seems to be a big catalyst in the advent of the prohibition movement. For the first time, state law dictated the sale of all alcohol, except for medicine. Not particularly popular with many, and eventually led to a violent riot, regardless it inspired other states to seek prohibition. Even though this major riot caused the repeal of the law, only to again be legislated just three decades later. It would be in the 1890s when more serious movements against alcohol started. The most important of these would be the Anti-Saloon League, or ASL. ASL was promoted as a religion-based organization that existed solely to combat alcohol. The goal was to ban it outright, and the means of doing this were quite shady, to say the least. ASL truly mastered the art of influencing mass media. It would function as a group that screamed the loudest, that fought the dirtiest, and would refuse to stop its goals. It would gain political allies through thinly veiled corruption. Basically, ASL would confront a politician, and if they agreed to join the cause, they would almost have a guaranteed spot in office. If they refused, they would nearly guaranteed lose the election. ASL was a political powerhouse that got whatever it wanted. It gained a fervent following among many, from progressives to racists, from intellectuals to the common worker. By using the persuasion of religion and morality, it would grow astronomically. The leader of this league was Wayne Wheeler, quite an unassuming looking man. An Ohioan who grew up on a farm, he would grow deep resentment from a young age for alcohol. He was injured by a worker on the farm who was quite drunk and managed to stab him with his farm tools. This event transformed Wheeler, who would go on to join the ASL after college. Starting low in the ranks, he would quickly move up with his natural, undying hatred of alcohol. He realized to further the movement, he needed a lot of public approval, and fast. This began his policy of Wheelerism, which would use the media to make it seem as though the general public was all in on a specific issue. How would this be achieved? Some rather dark means, actually. This is where the corruption comes into play as fear against the ASL rained down for politicians. Wheeler was, by many means, not a man to argue with. He was unwilling to change minds on his beliefs, and instead opted to resort to pushing for laws that would be obviously against the general public. He saw only one option. Now it's not to say the movement was all based in less than moral messaging and corruption. Many citizens supported ASL simply because they believed alcohol was genuinely making the world a worse place. Some just had a distaste of Germans after the war. 
kind of like leads to that kind of thing where if, if they ban something that people want... They want it more. Not only do you want it more, it becomes like the corruption kicks in and it's run by the... Like they'll always have alcohol, it's just... It's a bit like drugs, yeah. for example, yeah. right? So you can't, you know, thing like cocaine's not legal, right? Over here. But you can get it. Yeah. And the ones that control it are the are the, um, the guys that cause trouble. You know, it's run by the, the underworld, if you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's... This, you know, this is going to go the same way, obviously, with the, with the mobsters running it. Yeah. And that's how it's going to get away. That's yeah, there's always going to be alcohol. There's always so going to be alcohol. And you can't just get rid of it. You know? it's not going to well, medication, you can turn medication you know, into the medication containing yeah. alcohol. Yeah. You know, it's always when you used to go to the supermarkets in like Saudi Arabia, you'd see people all next to, in the supermarkets, they'll put like the wheat, the barley, the sugar, all next to each other. So That's how you make that's beer. That's how you make beer. Yeah. So you know, you put you pack it all up, take it, order online a brew, you know, brew making uh, still or whatever. And that, there you go, you brew your own brew. You do your own brew. And is that what people do? Yeah. 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 Is it illegal to yeah. make your own? It's, it's illegal, but it's kind of like the, it's brushed under the carpet. Yeah. Because when you're in Saudi, you live mostly on the compounds. And it's like, it's all Western, sort of like run on the compounds. And the, yeah. these compounds are huge, sort of thing. So it's always frowned upon. It's not, it's not accepted. If you don't know, people don't know, do they? Yeah, well, no, yeah, yeah. they're not going to raid your uh, house or yeah. anything. Well, Okay. <laughs> German culture was quite fond of alcohol. Anyway, for many, the idea was that if alcohol was eliminated, crime associated around alcohol would be too. Oh boy, were they wrong. This leads us to December 18th, 1917. On this day, the 18th Amendment was passed, which banned the creation and sale of alcohol. This did not apply to drinking it, however, so a rather major loophole existed for many. It would also be quite a while before this would be ratified. In the meantime, the Wartime Prohibition Act of 1917 would be passed, banning all alcohol over 2.75%. While it was intended to ration grain for the war effort, this would not be its final purpose, as the war ended just a week earlier. By January 16, 1919, the 18th Amendment was ratified and alcohol would be made illegal on January 17, 1920. The Volstead Act was introduced to set forth more standards on the 18th Amendment, such as the specific percentages of alcohol allowed in home beverages, usually limited to 0.5%, passed on October 28, 1919. The immediate response to this... So you can still have Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I got, what alcohol I got is crucified that, like? the other day for saying, who drink light beer anyway? Yeah. The only light beer I've had where I've like, I thought, it's actually all right, was um, San Miguel light. But they were saying that Bud Light was like four point something percent. Yeah. It wasn't like... It's low in calories, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's not low in, it's not light in alcohol, it's light in calories. Right, okay. Yeah, same as San Miguel light, it was light in calories as opposed and to... Cause light. Yeah, things like that. But I think some of the, the lowest alcohol, the lowest one I know, um, like beer wise, is Carlsberg. Carlsberg's like 3.8% I think. Really? Yeah. I'm like white light in a summit like that. Yeah. Is that it's why like, Mike drinks it? No, he drinks Carl. Carl no, he does. <laughs> yeah, which is like 2.8. <laughs> That's diet, diet Carlsberg. I think Carlsberg's quite light. I don't think it's, yeah. yeah. Mind you, I used to like Budweiser. I know you didn't like it, no. but I used to like it because yeah. it was quite easy to drink. You yeah. could have like 10 easy. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus. And then, yeah, that was just lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> 10 easy. Wait. <laughs> Wait was actually what was intended, less people drank, and it seemed like overall the goal of the temperance movement succeeded. But this would start the downfall of the prohibition movement, literally, just as it was starting. Business savvy crime leaders saw opportunity in the passing of the act. The demand for alcohol would rise, and only those willing to operate outside the law would be willing to supply it. Some began to gather and collect alcohol in huge numbers as to sell it once the law would pass. As this illegal sale of alcohol became more fruitful, violence began to grow. Gang leaders became wealthy men, and this wealth brought power, control of vast areas with their resources. They were quite well known, in fact, and this would lead many to question, why weren't they arrested? The reason? Well, they were too powerful. If somebody would attempt to call them out, arrest them, or inform police, they would be killed or bribed. Those who demanded prohibition for a safer world were quite disappointed to say the least. Crime rose, and many died. It seemed fairly evident the movement was failing. Many people would drink alcohol in these days under the safety of a local speakeasy. This location, hidden from local authorities, would garner a culture of its own. Women were more accepted here than bars of days past, and the world of men-only bars seemed to disappear. Jazz would- Oh, 
was just about to say, when do you think it became acceptable for women to go out and drink as well? Because it was always the men would go after work and the woman would be home with the children. Over here, you mean? Or around the world? I think that's more of an over here thing. I don't. I can't answer that question for other cultures around the world. Yeah. But over here is probably like uh, about last Tuesday. <laughs> 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 or next Tuesday. <laughs> no, but I was just saying there that you could see in the corner. I could see a woman, and I was like, "Oh, okay, so women are." Accepted. He said women were more like more accepted yeah. in the speakeasies than they were in the bars prior. Yeah. yeah. So the speakeasies was like the, uh, yeah, the, the underground, underground yeah. sort of like drinking establishments, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of thing. But what you had is um, yeah, in the twenties, women won't, obviously wouldn't have been allowed into. We once had a speakeasy. During the um, the outbreak of the uh, the bad times of 2019, 2020, 2021 times, yeah. what went down? <laughs> Underground. Yeah, in here. In here. This was, <laughs> this was our speakeasy. This was our speakeasy. Yeah, we had a band on everything. Yeah. Yeah, with alcohol and all that, and yeah. never had to stay home. Well, we all have to work together, so we were, we were, we were, um, Keeping everybody else we safe. We were keeping everyone yeah, else keep, safe, yeah. that's right. That's keep right. everyone safe as well. Got to enjoy yeah. yourself a little bit. <laughs> it was very popular and would reach mainstream status fairly quickly. Many opted for a more personal route. Moonshine would be made from homes with sometimes dangerous results, and personal wine cubes could be sold as fruit drinks that would include instructions on how to ferment. The American government wasn't too happy with the home brewing that was occurring, and the action it would take still leaves many in disbelief. Manufacturers of ethyl alcohol, a key ingredient to many home brewers, would be instructed to basically poison the ingredient to a point where people would be blinded or killed if they attempted to drink it. This happened, obviously, but it seems hard to pinpoint a number of how many were killed by this rather terrifying action. The ASL was supportive of this movement, with old Wheeler going so far as to suggest that this was what was needed to happen. Support plummeted for the ASL, and it soon seemed apparent that the Prohibition movement lost most of its support. As the Great Depression caused major financial issues for the nation, legalization of alcohol became quite less of a necessity for the United States. After all, Crime lords made billions off untaxed alcohol. Now America needed some of that dough. In March of 1933, this would lead to the Colin Harrison Act of 1933, which would legalize alcohol below 3.2%, which effectively legalized bars again. While not truly back to the level of days before prohibition, it was a start. With this came the 21st Amendment on December 5th, 1933, effectively repealing the 18th. Contrary to some belief, it didn't actually make alcohol legal, it just leaves that up to the state. It removes the status of alcohol being outright illegal to make and sell everywhere in the USA. And states have taken up this opportunity. In many places, it's illegal to sell alcohol in stores on Sundays, and in others, it is much more restrictive. Kansas would make it so alcohol could not be served in a public bar until 1987. And even further, Mississippi still kept the same laws of prohibition until 1966. The effects of prohibition seem a bit abstract today. Obviously, alcohol is sold, and the foundation of many businesses here in the states. Bars function as social hubs for men and women alike, a result of the speakeasy days. Jazz is mainstream. What I'm getting at is the results of prohibition have changed America. How much? Well, let's ask ourselves. What if Prohibition never happened? Just, just kidding. Why do you think Prohibition failed? Would you like to see more videos like this? Like, comment, and subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody of Knowledge Hub. They still have dry yeah. towns though in, in the they US, do. don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, we stayed in one in Tennessee, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, but, the, but it had a vineyard. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, because we went wine tasting and they, and they told me, and funny enough, when I was driving down, I thought, I've got a feeling this is a dry town. I don't know if I'd read something about it when we were driving. I said to you on the way down, yeah. I've got a feeling this might be a dry town. Yeah, it was near Dollywood, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and you were only a little oh. kid. And uh, and then we ended up going wine tasting. Mm. Taking with Aiden. With the kids. <laughs> well, he was yeah. in, I think he was in a stroll at the time. Yeah, he was. Mm. But it was, um, it was one of them where it's, it, it's a fa- it was a family thing anyway, yeah. wasn't it? A lot, a lot of people had kids with them. Yeah. But it was, uh, I don't know, it's, um, we don't have any dry towns over here that I know of. No, I'm not aware of any. No, but it's a big part of our culture, the yeah, bar, yeah. the bar culture. But it's not the bar, it's the pub, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, we had two, um, two viewers come over on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. From, uh, they were from Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas. And we met them in the railway, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Uh, Connor and Adrian. Yeah. And uh, we had a few beers with them and a chat. Yeah. yeah. And they seemed to enjoy the British culture of, yeah. of drinking. So yeah. it, was, uh, it was nice because to see. Because they could drink. 
Yeah, they have quite a few beers. Yeah. Every time I've seen them, though, they have a different, different beer. A different one, yeah. yeah. They've got the Guinness, then yeah. they have like a pale ale. Yeah, they've been drinking, they're trying everything. Yeah. They've been going through all the pumps. Can yeah. you mix yeah. beers? You're like almost like spirits here, like all oh, stick to one. Is it the same with beers kind of thing? Like, no, or, not, mm-hmm. really. Not, not really. really. Not really. don't no. really want to sort of like mix too much any of anything. Really. Yeah. Do you like long beer or, yeah. or, or spirits? But even if you mix sodas and stuff, it's uh, not make, it's not good. It's great for your stomach, but no. it's a good video. That I enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, very I good. enjoy listening about prohibition because it's something that really uh, passionate yeah, passionate about. about. Yeah, yeah. obviously, the, the white failed is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and if they ever bring it <laughs> yeah, over it here, sense. you know, the, uh, they're trying to sort of like raise taxes like crazy over here at the moment. Yeah, but, they but they have done it for. They've levied them as zero for a long time, and now they're putting them up to, to big numbers on certain things like whiskey and wine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Job I don't like whiskey. There was a story. Sorry about oh, someone, one of the, someone might let me know this on who's watching. There's a story about Pappy Van Winkle during the Prohibition, and now that came to like that came to uh, to prominence as well. So if you know that story, you can get, get a link to the video on it. Let me know because I'd, uh, I'd like to see that one again. Yeah. Seen one of them on Netflix, which was good, but yeah. that was uh, that yeah. was post. Uh, that yeah. was more modern. Mm. Anyway, hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.